Okay, in this tutorial I show you everything you need to know to install this exact small business cleaning services website. The key to this tutorial is that it uses a starter site made by professionals so you don't have to do every single step to get your small business site running. Instead, we're going to install the entire starter site that includes all of these pages and you can use them as placeholders, all of the photos and the text, and then customize it to your needs. So you'll get this commercial page, you can delete it or keep it if you want. You get a blog page to see how you can uh, increase your own presence in your town and you get a contact form and I show you how to connect that to your email. So I hope you find these tools helpful. I'll leave any questions in the comments and thanks for trying out these tools. Okay, before we get started, uh, we need to get hosting. Uh, Host is the company that stores your website on their server. Right now, I have my website where I post my tutorial videos loaded up, step-by-step, wp.com. If you go down to the bottom of the front page, you'll see this section on SiteGround. Um, SiteGround is one of only three hosts recommended by WordPress.org. I have some links here uh, going about uh, some of the information on them. You can Google the reviews, uh, SiteGround reviews, and see for yourself. But anyway, if you use this link, uh, you save 60%, or if you use the link in the video description, it'll take you to SiteGround. And you'll see we want this web hosting here. Get started and I'm gonna choose the cheapest option because you can always upgrade if you need uh, if your website gets a lot of traffic so we'll go with the first one and for this tutorial I'm going to make a brand new website so I'm going to choose a new domain and I'm going to type in my domain learn WP Omaha and I'll click proceed now we'll see if that's available. Okay, that's available. Congratulations. It's available to register. Now I need to fill out this page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill it out. Note that the email and password that you enter is going to be your login and password for your SiteGround account where you log into SiteGround.com to do your billing and stuff. Okay, I put in my information and I put in my credit card. Now we're further down on the page and we have uh, purchase information, uh, the plan, the data center, uh, Chicago is always the one that I've used, um, the period, 12 months, hosting price, $4 a month. Um, so over one year, that's about $47. And I'm buying a new domain, that's $16 and domain privacy protects your name and your personal information uh, that's twelve dollars a year and um, I removed this SiteGround site scanner this is a monitoring service um, that adds another twenty dollars um, so I unchecked this box and now I have uh, a total cost for the year of seventy five dollars that comes out to about seven dollars a month or uh, closer to six dollars a month here you have I confirm that I read and agree the terms and I'd also like to s receive news uh, I'll probably uncheck that well I might as well and hit pay now now it's gonna run through the credit card and and all of that your order was successfully submitted um, thank you for choosing SiteGround. So if I click proceed to the customer area. Okay, in the customer area, it gives you a few options. I'm going to choose start a new website. And now I'm going to choose WordPress. Okay, and further below, you'll see you have to enter information in here for your WordPress website. Save this information because you'll need this information to log into your site. The other login and password was used to log into SiteGround, and this will be used to log into your own website. All right, now that I have the text box filled in, I'm going to hit confirm. 
says, do you want to add this to your account? I'm just going to leave it. I confirm. We're going to install WordPress now. Hopefully you saved your email and your login and your password. So now we're going to proceed to the customer area. Okay, now that we're in the SiteGround uh, customer area, if you go to My Accounts, you will see that you have your domain here with a little WordPress icon here. So you've successfully installed WordPress on this domain. Let's go to that domain and see what's there. Uh, they keep changing the setup process, so I keep having to make a new demo to go through the initial setup, but it's not that bad. Uh, in about 24 or 48 hours, you'll be able to type your domain right into the address bar up here. But for now, since it, sometimes it takes a day or so, we're going to just click on our domain and visit our site. So let's do that. And you'll see you have the default WordPress installation. I paused the video here real quick just to let you know that if your site doesn't look like this, that's okay. Just continue with the steps and we'll be installing the theme and the starter site soon. This is uh, your website and currently it has sort of a canned uh, installation. Okay, now we're going to log into our site so we can change the settings. To do that, go to the end of your domain, type slash wp-login.php. So whatever your domain is, at the end of it, put a slash wp-login.php and that'll take you to the login screen. Even if you have an under construction plugin, this will take you to your login screen so that you can log into your website. Okay, now you put in your installation login and password or email and password that you put in when you installed WordPress. And if you're confused about which login and password to use, here's a screenshot from when you installed WordPress. Use this login and this password from this screen from about three minutes ago in the video. And then log in. The first time you log in, you'll notice it gives you this setup wizard. Uh, this is new to the process and it only happens the first time you log in. Uh, if you click start now, you can just click through the screens. It gives you some themes to choose from. I'm going to show you the awesome theme that we're going to use. So you don't have to click anything on this screen. Just go down to uh, next. And then here are some plugins to choose from. I deselect these plugins because I show you all the plugins that you need. So if you want to research these, you can. Uh, and you can install those yourself, but we use our own contact form and so we don't need any plugins. Click continue. Uh, you can get all this stuff uh, on your own, so you don't need to install these other things at the moment. So just click complete and it'll install the default theme with no extra plugins. Okay, so far so good. Let's go to the dashboard where all the settings are. And this is the simplified dashboard brought to you by SiteGround. If you don't want the simplified version, scroll all the way to the bottom and go to switch to default dashboard. That'll give you the regular version. To go back to the simplified version, you just hit a button down here on the side. So when you look at your dashboard, you see you have a bunch of settings on the side and then you have some information here in the middle. Uh, there's some information here. This is just a fake comment put in by SiteGround. If you go to your posts page, you'll see you have a fake post that was put in by SiteGround. So if we were to visit our site, you'll see right here, this is that fake post. This is what's showing up on your site right now. So let's go back to the dashboard and let's remove that post by clicking all posts and then I'm going to toss that post in the trash. Now you'll see there are no posts and there are no pages. 
Well, here's a forms preview page. So I'm going to trash that as well. So now we don't have any posts, we don't have any pages. Now when we go to our site, it should just be a blank site, nothing found, so there are no posts at the moment. And now we can go ahead and get started with installing stuff. A lot of the appearance is controlled by what theme you have installed. And the starter sites run a specific theme, so we need to get that theme. So go to themes. Right now we're doing this default one. I'm going to add new, search themes, and type Astra, A-S-T-R-A. Here it is here. You can preview it, but we need this to be able to install the starter site. So click install, activate, and now you're running the Astra theme. When you click on your blog, you'll see it looks totally different. This is kind of a blank slate theme, so it doesn't have like any like cactus photos or anything. But don't be fooled, this theme's amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the dashboard. And now we're going to install all the plugins we need. So let's go to plugins. And you'll see SiteGround put a few in here already when we went through the setup process. We can deactivate the importer. I'm not going to use that. Delete. OK. We can deactivate the starter. That was that little starter menu that we went through. Delete that. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave this because it's the SiteGround optimizer. <clears throat> OK, next let's add the plugins that we need. Add new, search, Elementor. This is one of the key plugins, and it's amazing, and it's completely free. They have a free version and a, and a pro version. We'll just be using the free version, so go ahead and install now. This is the page builder that we use, rather than uh, the Gutenberg or, or any of the other page builders. This page builder is one of the nicest ones that I've used. Click Activate. And now they have some tutorials and stuff. But let's go back to plugins. OK, we have that one. Let's do Add New. Let's search for Contact Form 7, the number 7. It's this one here. It has over a million installations, so it's well trusted. It's, um, it's up to date. So go ahead and click Install Now. This is what the starter site uses for its contact form. Activate. OK, we got that. Add New. Next, we need the Starter Sites plugin. So type in Astra Starter. We're still in Plugins. And we're going to install Astra Starter Sites plugin. Click Install Now. Activate. OK, now we have that one. Let's do another one, an Under Construction plugin. Type in Under Construction. We'll install this one here. That'll give us an under construction page instead of someone browsing our uh, unfinished site. Activate. Okay, it gives you this little menu here. Dismiss that. Okay, one more. We're going to add new and type site origin, no spaces. We want this orange one here, Site Origin Widgets Bundle. It's this one that the starter sites sometimes use social icons from this bundle. So since it integrates this uh, plugin, we're going to go ahead and activate it just in case your starter site uses it. So install now. Activate. 
And now you have all of the plugins that you need to get started. The security plugin that I use is WordFence, and I'll be putting a, a tutorial on how to set up your security plugin. And I'll be doing other plugins and stuff too, but those, these are the essential plugins. Okay, what I wanted to show you was, since we did the under construction plugin, uh, you'll see you have this option up here. And right now it's off. But to turn on the under construction page, you just flip this, click the off, and it'll flip to green. So now you see under construction mode is on. That means that you're going, your visitors will get an under construction page. But you will not see all of the admins that log in can see everything in the in the site but a visitor that doesn't have an admin login will see the under construction page if I go to file new incognito window and I type the website you'll see you get this under construction page and if you don't know how to log in you gotta to remember to do your slash wp-login.php so even when you have this guy you can always log in from this um, address and I also wanted to show you the under construction page has this little tab here and when you click that tab it'll take you to the login page so there's two ways to get to your login page when it's under construction and once you log in you can always take it off under construction by clicking that little toggle switch now it's red meaning under construction mode is off but while we do the tutorial we'll just leave it on so that our visitors aren't confused and now we're gonna get ready to put in the starter site okay in an attempt to future proof this tutorial um, you probably installed WordPress with WordPress 5 or later what this means is that it uses Gutenberg as its uh, block editor and it makes websites easier to build but for making blog posts and whatnot it's a lot easier to use the classic editor so in order to uh, enable us to use the classic editor you'll see you'll get this warning sometimes that says we went ahead and put in the plugin for the classic editor so that you can use it if you want this is part of the transition to Gutenberg uh, we don't use Gutenberg in these tutorials because we already have a better page builder in Elementor but we do use the classic editor to make blog posts so if you go to your plugins and you see you have the classic editor then it was added there for you this means that when we do the blog posts tutorials on one of the other steps that you don't need to install this so this is just something that I want you to install if you don't already have it if you go to plugins add new and if you type classic the start of classic editor you'll see it right here you just install now activate and then that way, if you ever want to write a blog post in a real simple way, you can just switch to the regular editor. Okay, now that we have the plugins installed, there's one more preliminary step I wanted to do before we install the starter site, and that is to change the name of the site from this default setting. To do that, we're going to go to Appearance, Customize. This brings up the Customizer. This has a lot of the settings that your site has, the settings that land outside of the page builder. So you can customize a lot of things within your site from this menu. If you go to Layout, Header, Site Identity, Aha, Site Title. This is where you would type the name of your business for your site. So. We'll just call the site title business site, display the site title, and then the tagline. I'm going to erase that. We're not going to display the tagline. And I'll click publish. And that updates all of the settings. And now I'll hit the X to get out of the customizer. Now you'll see you got a new title at the top, 
and we're ready for the next step. Okay, if you've made it this far, you'll be really glad that you've followed along because now we're going to put in the starter site. To do that, we're going to go to Appearance, Astra Sites, and then we're going to choose our page builder, which is Elementor and you'll see you have a mix of agency sites and free sites so the agency ones you have to pay for so I'm just gonna click the free button up here and these are all of the template starter sites that you can install right now to look at one you just click it preview you get to see what all the site contains all of these templates all of these pages and then here are the required plugins that you have to get in order to install this starter site. So you can install them from this menu. So if you see one that you really like and you want to um, and you want to get that one instead of the cleaning one, you can use it and then adapt it for your own uh, for your own purposes. So you don't have to get the one that we're going to install. They're all pretty much the same. They just have different layouts, different photos. But you can use any one that you want for your cleaning site. That's why step one, there's going to be a bunch of different step ones because I'm going to be going through and using these different templates. The only difference is, is that we're going to choose a different one for each step one. Anyway, here is the cleaning one. If you click preview, it says you need ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg so let's install that and we have all of the other requirements already uh, downloaded so now that we have the required plugins we're just going to import this site it says you should do it on a fresh installation so I say okay okay now that we have imported the site you can go directly to the site I'm just going to click the X to get out of the plugin and we're back at the dashboard and if you click visit site you'll see that here we have a nice template to work from here's the home page you get an about page you get this information here with photos, nice layouts, professional layouts, a blog page, and a contact form. And let's go back to the dashboard and let's look at what we actually have here in the settings. Under pages, this is where the pages exist. So you make a page and then they put it in the menu. So these are those pages. Under media, you got all of this templated photos. This is where you would drop and drag and drop your photos into your media. Like if you have a photo that you want to change out, you just put it on your desktop, drop that baby in there, change the name to something, and then you'll be able to add it to your page. And then under posts, we have some information about the posts and it used the block editor the Gutenberg block editor to make some of the posts so we can look at that and yeah so now we're getting ready to um, make some changes to this site and we are really moving along now nicely you can see you have a nice five six pages and then I'll, I'll help you connect this contact form to your uh, email all right let's make some changes to our site um, if you go to pages those are the pages that appear in your menu and some of these don't actually appear in the menu you see there's duplicate pages here's a home and here's a home with Elementor the key to these pages is that they were all built in Elementor so to get the one that you need to edit, look for the one that has Elementor. This one, it's probably if you click edit with the block editor, 
you'll see there's nothing like this on your site because you haven't connected it to the menu and it's not used. So you just go back to pages and you go to the one with Elementor and you click edit with Elementor. If you happen to click block editor you'll see there's this edit with Elementor button so you just click that. Now we're opening up Elementor and you'll see it brings up your home page. These blue sections have tabs at the top. Uh, if I want to get rid of this book now, uh, this button doesn't go anywhere, so I just want to get rid of it. I just click the X, and now that section's gone. To bring it back, I just go to History down here, and I go to the, the, the point where I want to bring it back. Now, when you first start out, I would recommend just clicking on the text and changing the text. I wouldn't move things around. Uh, I would just work on just filling in the content that they provide. These layouts are very professional, so you can just use them and not worry about making stuff from scratch. If you want to make a new section, you can just hit the plus. Here's the columns. Uh, once you click like a two column, then you hit this grid up here and then you give it a heading maybe you drop an image in there so you can make stuff on your own but I would recommend just using the stuff that they have because they their stuff is probably better than what most of us can do starting out so you hit the X get rid of that so anytime you need to change something you just click on the widget these are images what else so like I was saying um, and the difference between these, uh, see we have an image in the background here. Well, to change this image in the background, that's a background image in this section. So you click the section, style, and then there's the image. So you would delete that and then add one from your media. Uh, looks like I need to find it. There she is. All right. And then this, to make the text pop out, they did a background overlay. So again, I'm still in the edit section. Oops, hit the wrong thing. So I'm still in the edit section. I click the section, style. I'm going to collapse the background and go to background overlay. And you'll see they added a color here, a white color. And then they changed the opacity of it. So that's how they put the background photo in. You can do the same thing for this one. Edit section. Style. Here's the photo here that you would change. Here are the photo settings. So that's basically the gist of it. Any of these you can, re, uh, you can duplicate. So if you make one column and you want to reuse it, just right click duplicate. And then just drag it and you see it's dragging to a different area on your page. You can duplicate anything. You can duplicate the entire section. You can duplicate this entire column. Delete a column. You can duplicate a widget and then drag it to a different spot in your site. So it's really easy to duplicate the work and not have to redo it from scratch. Right click delete this is a section inside of a section so they use this intersection widget so that they could get the photo in the back but then still have a two column for your uh, content and, I, and if you look at my other steps uh, you can also learn a lot more so if you want to change the fonts the colors you know there's a lot of other steps where I go into more detail this is just sort of an intro to adjusting your site. So when you're done, don't forget to update frequently. And now when you exit Elementor, you hit this three lines up here, exit to dashboard. Going to visit site. And now you got your site again. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because it doesn't go anywhere. Click to book. It just gives you a hashtag. We didn't make a page for this booking page, so let's edit the page. You can also edit it from here by clicking Edit to ed Edit with Elementor.
and this time I'm just going to get rid of this and now we don't have that booking page uh, you can change this book so when you click on a button it says where's the link go to and right now they have it filled with a, a pound sign hashtag so you need to copy the link from the page that you want to send it to and paste it in here um, we don't have a booking page so I would recommend just deleting the button and then going down here and you know you could use the uh, the contact form and request a callback and then they can just contact you and you could just book it over the phone so I'm gonna update that and now I'm gonna show you how to make sure that your contact form is correct so let's exit let's go to the contact page so go to pages contact I'm gonna use the one that's Elementor edit with Elementor it opens the contact page here is the contact form when you click this you get this weird thing called short code this is the contact this is the uh, contact form 7 the plugin that we installed it uses this short code I want to ensure that this code is pointing to the right form so I'm going to exit you'll see what I mean in a sec if I go here to contact and see here are the forms that they've already created for me if I click this contact form 1 look at this ID is 28 so it looks to me like they're using the wrong one so if I do edit this is the information you can uh, Google contact form 7 and find out if you need to change this stuff you can change it but if we go to the mail tab it should have your email in the to section if your email isn't found here then you need to add that here once you get your email in there this is how you're going to receive someone that fills out your form you will receive this type of email in your inbox so they've already filled it in for you so let's go back to contact forms and let's highlight the entire short code now we'll go back to pages contact Elementor page edit with Elementor Now I click the little widget here and now I'm going to leave the old one and I'm going to paste the new one. You'll see the ID was different. So I'm going to erase the old one and now you see it might change a little bit because the, the code was a little different. But now when someone fills this out you will get it in your inbox. Click update. and we just want to ensure that this callback here is correct as well so let's go to the customizer appearance customize and this you can edit some of the settings outside of the pages like the footer this is a footer widget it, you click that and it's saying we're going to put in contact form 7236. So I hit the X and I go to my contact forms. And it looks like this one here, 236, callback request. If I edit that and I go to mail, aha see this the two section should be your email right now it's set to wordpress at sites wpastra.com so go ahead and put in my email or whatever your email is and now when someone fills that out on your site it'll go to this email and you will receive an email in your box with this information
you need to put your uh, your name is what they put in the contact form and then this right here my domain so if I actually use my domain or it's a subdomain for my example now it's probably gonna say it's okay alright good so that's how you do the contact form and uh, I hope you enjoyed this step one uh, there's a lot more information if you need to make more changes but this will at least get you started okay that concludes step one of the program I hope you were able to get your small business site up and running uh, if you want to finish your site with the other steps feel free to visit my site also don't forget to turn off your under construction plugin when you are ready to go live